Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 17th episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. Today is a special day because Apple held their Worldwide Developer Conference, more commonly known as WWDC, and in this video I'll be going over all of the features of their three big announcements, which consisted of iOS 5, OS X Lion, and iCloud. So to start off, I want to talk about iOS 5 and all of its new features. Notification Center brings all of your notifications into one simple and convenient place, and you can access Notification Center anywhere simply by dragging down on the top of your screen. Now you can do this within any application, so it is system wide. And from Notification Center, you get access to your text messages, emails, friend requests from Game Center, and more. And you even get the option to show the weather for a specific location. And the best part is that it even works on the lock screen. And it displays new types of notifications that you can act upon simply by sliding. So for instance, if you have a voicemail on your iPhone, you can slide to listen when you are on your lock screen. Now you don't actually slide on the unlock portion of it, you actually slide on the notification itself. And you can also choose which types of notifications you want Notification Center to display. Now one of the biggest features of iPhone iOS 5 is iMessages. With iMessages, users on iPhones, iPads, and iPod Touches all running iOS 5 will be able to send messages to one another, and you can send messages that consist of text, pictures, contacts, audio, videos, and specific locations. And best of all, it is free, and you can do it over Wi-Fi or 3G. And if you're an iPhone user, it's already built into the current Messages app. Another addition to iOS 5 is newsstand and it allows users to easily organize their newspaper and magazine subscriptions while providing an iBook form factor. iOS 5 will also allow users to set to-do lists like never before. With the new reminders app, you can set reminders for a preset time or you can set them to be triggered by a specific location. So for instance, say you want to go to the grocery store and you want your grocery list to appear once you enter the parking lot of said grocery store, and it will only appear once you have entered that specific location. So this is a really awesome and revolutionary way to bring to-dos to iOS devices. Another huge feature that iOS 5 will bring is Twitter integration. All you have to do is sign into the settings app, and then from there, you can basically access Twitter from anywhere, and users can then tweet whatever they want, whether it be text, pictures, location, anything, from within any application on your iOS device. Now you can also allow specific applications to access Twitter and for instance say something like use this application and it's basically another way for developers to get noticed. But of course it has to have your permission to use Twitter. And with iOS 5 the camera app gets a whole lot better. You can now access your camera directly on the lock screen if you choose so. Now you can have the normal slide to unlock feature on your lock screen or you can have it just say unlock and it makes the slide to unlock unlock bar smaller and it puts a little camera icon to the right hand side. From there users can simply tap on that camera icon and have quick and easy access to their camera. Now from within the camera application itself, users are able to pinch to zoom, turn on on-screen grid lines that allow you to line up for the perfect shot. You can even tap and hold on the screen to lock your focus and exposure. And finally users are now able to capture their pictures simply by hitting the volume up button. The Photos app also allows you to edit pictures on the fly. You now have the options to crop and rotate, auto enhance your photos, and remove red eyes. iOS 5 improves Safari even more, especially with the built-in Safari Reader, which displays web articles without ads or annoying text, so you can read without distraction. Reading lists also let you save interesting articles to read later, while iCloud keeps the list updated across all devices. On the iPad, tabbed browsing helps you keep track of all of your open pages and it lets you easily switch between them. And overall, it brings better performance to Safari. iPad users now have access to multitasking gestures, using four or five fingers they can swipe up to reveal the multitasking bar, pinch with four or five fingers to return to the home screen, 
or swipe left or right with four or five fingers to switch between apps. Both the Mail and Calendar app have slight revisions and iPad 2 users are now able to mirror their actions to their TV via Apple TV. iOS users will also be able to sync their devices wirelessly to their computers if needed over a shared Wi-Fi network. But perhaps the most amazing feature of iOS 5 is the fact that you don't need a computer to use an iDevice whatsoever from now on. Instead of having to plug it in to activate when you purchase a new device, you can do all of that straight on the device itself. You'll also be able to download the latest firmwares on your device instead of having to plug it into iTunes and it will also install on your device as well. And instead of having to back up via iTunes, you can now back up safely via iCloud. Now iCloud is a free service that Apple will be offering later this fall along with iOS 5 and it allows users to back up and store their content on Apple servers. Once users purchase songs on iTunes, it will send those songs to iCloud and then users can listen to those songs simply by signing into iCloud and they can do it across all of their devices, including computers, both Mac and PC users. And if they want iCloud to sync their ripped songs from CDs or obtained through other sources, then you can pay $25 per year and it lets you store up to 20,000 songs. And the best part is if you pay for this service, iTunes will automatically enhance the quality of your music and it works the same way for purchase apps, iBooks, all of your iWorks documents, contacts, calendar and mail applications, and it's even able to back up your device settings, app data, ringtones, text and MMS messages, and the layout of your home screen. Now finally I'm going to talk about OS X Lion. Now, I'm just going to give a brief summary of some of the new features. So users will now have more control over their laptops with improved multi-touch gestures. Lion also offers system-wide support for full screen applications that take advantage of every part of your display. Now one of Lion's better features is Mission Control. Now Mission Control brings together full screen apps, dashboard expose, and spaces in one feature that gives you a bird's eye view of everything that's going on on your system. Launchpad is also a really exciting new feature that's a new full screen home for all of the apps on your Mac. Just click the Launchpad icon in your dock and once you're inside of Launchpad, open windows fade away and they're replaced by a display of all of your applications. From there you can arrange your applications whichever way you want and you can organize them and you can group them together in folders or simply delete them. Now Resume allows users to access their apps right from where they left off. So if you need to reboot there's no need to save what you're working on and close out of your applications anymore. Especially with the new auto save and versions features which automatically back up what you're working on and it lets you pick which version or or which variation of the document you want to use. OS X Lion also brings an improved mail app that basically looks like the iPad's version of mail where it has two parts of the screen and the left part is dedicated to your mailboxes and the right part is dedicated to the message or conversation that you're currently in. And finally, AirDrop allows users to share files to anyone around you. No Wi-Fi network required. All you have to do is click the AirDrop icon in the Finder sidebar and your Mac automatically discovers other AirDrop users within 30 feet of you and from there you can send files back and forth. So I am super excited. Let me know down below in the comment section which feature you are most excited about and if you're still going to jailbreak with the release of iOS 5 and why. So I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did and if you found it informative at all, please remember to rate it up and again, if you want to be updated every time I release a new video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.